Hey everybody, Blake at Toy Tech here with another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today I'm going to show you how to install some Toy Tech rear springs in a Toyota 4Runner. So the first thing you want to do is jack it up, put it on some jack stands on the frame so you can allow your axle to droop. Um, next step would be to unbolt your sway bar end links from the frame on both sides. Um, unbolt the shocks from the frame on both sides. That way you can get your axle to droop and uh, you can get these factory springs out. Getting the factory springs out is pretty easy. Just push down, pull it out, and then save the factory bump stop. Okay, so now that you've got your factory coil out, uh, my first tip for you is going to be um, unclamp the ABS line from the axle here. So this ABS wire uh, runs along here, and when we're putting the new spring in, we'll be going past this, and you could rub it, pinch it, um, and break it. And I'm sure these are pretty pricey from the dealer. So just take a flathead screwdriver, pop the little clips. And you only have to do these two. And then pull that line out and you can actually droop it under the panhard bar, kind of get it out of the way. That way it doesn't get pinched or broken. You'll notice that your axle has some droop to it. Um, it's not gonna be enough to get a taller coil in though. So what I like to do is um, loosen the bolts for the control arms at the frame and this is the lower control arm, so you'll unbolt that at the frame. Keep the bolt in there though, just loosen the nut. Um, is that bushing being clamped is not allowing the axle to droop that much. So you can uh, loosen that on both sides. Also, you can loosen your upper control arms uh, at the axle on both sides and your panhard bar at the frame on the passenger side. And that'll give you a lot more droop. Okay, so before you install the uh, new coils and you go articulating this axle back and forth, um, there's some stuff connected to it that you definitely don't want to stretch. Here on the driver's side, we have some brake lines um, that you definitely don't want to stretch. And here on the passenger side, we have another ABS wire. So uh, take a 12 millimeter socket, unbolt these, pull this tab out of the hole so it doesn't get stuck in there so it can move. And then do the same thing on the driver's side for the brake lines. And for the brake lines, you will have to get a screwdriver or something in there to pop this tab out. That way it doesn't stay in there. So pop that out, kind of pull it out of the way. That way there's enough slack in them when we go pushing that axle down to get the coil in. So we're ready to put the new coils in. Definitely start with the driver's side. It'll make things a lot easier. Um, you don't want to put the passenger side coil in and then come over here and fight the panhard bar the whole time. So that's why I like to start with the driver's side. Um, I'm gonna use this transmission jack to lift up on the passenger side to get more droop. Uh, you can definitely use a floor jack. It's totally up to the task. So I'm gonna position this on the passenger side under the lower control arm mount. And then what this will do will articulate the passenger side up and then push the driver's side down, that way we can get our new coil in there. All right, so now that you have your axle articulated down enough uh, to put the new coil in, grab your coil in the factory uh, bump stop, slide it on top, and then pay close attention to where the end of this coil wrap sits um, on the axle. You don't want to spin it around and then put everything back together because um, it'd be hard to spin back into place. So, put your coil in. Put it in the coil bucket on the frame. Push it over the hump. There we go. And then once you let the other side down, um, just clay, pay close attention um, to where this coil is inside that coil bucket. Okay, I've installed the passenger side coil. Um, it can be a little bit more difficult because um, we have a coil on the other side, so we're not gonna get um, as much articulation going up on the other side um, so we won't get as much droop on this side. Uh, but what I did was come in from the back here right in front of the muffler. Um, if you need another hand, push on the bottom of that coil and compress it a little bit to get it up over this hump um, and then you'll have it in. Um, make sure that when you torque your lower control arms, upper control arms and pan hard bar that the weight of the vehicle is on the ground. Uh, you want these torqued so the bushings are in a natural setting and not, you know, uh, articulated all the way down like this is right here. Um, after that, uh, bolt your shocks back up to the frame, bolt your tie rod 
uh, or not your tie rod, your sway bar end links back up to the frame. And um, that's all it takes. One more tip I have for you guys today. Um, this e-brake bracket right here. Um, when you lift the back of your forerunner, your axle is going to be at a different angle. And this can over time chafe the uh, rubber coating and then eventually go into the brake line cable too. So take some pliers or some channel locks. It's super easy. Uh, just spin that thing straight just like that. That way um, it won't start rubbing your e-brake cable. You can already see where it kind of rubbed a little bit there already.